Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another forecast discussion. We've got a pretty potent severe weather event on tap for today. We've got an enhanced risk out at the moment. This is being recorded pretty early this morning, 5 a.m. Gonna have to hit the road early today for chasing, so doing this forecast briefing early today. But we've got an enhanced risk for much of the eastern half of Texas, surrounded by a slight and marginal risk area. 10% hatched tornado probabilities right there and for the threat for several tornadoes, a couple of which could be strong across East Texas, Central and East Texas there, along with a damaging wind and a large hail threat. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, we don't usually do this, but we're gonna zoom in and give you a closer look at who is in and who is out. So this is our enhanced risk here. It goes basically from the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area, the um, I-20 corridor south through the I-35 corridor, and down to the Interstate 10 corridor, pretty much from the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area, at least the south side there, Denton, you are not in the enhanced risk. Gainesville, you are not in the enhanced risk. You do have a slight risk that does extend back up into northwest Texas, so Wichita Falls, uh, Bowie, Decatur, Nocona, Henrietta, Vernon, Childress, places like that, you are in the slight risk up there. The enhanced risk goes down again from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, down the I-35 corridor, pretty much Dallas-Fort Worth, Waco, Austin, pretty much through the San Antonio metro area there. Then over through Houston, Bryan, the Woodlands, up toward Palestine, Lufkin, Nacogdoches, then back up to the I-20 corridor there, Tyler, and Longview. You are in the enhanced risk area. As far as the 10%, the greatest tornado probabilities there, including the threat for strong tornadoes. Dallas-Fort Worth, you are not in the, the, the highest tornado probabilities, but places like Tyler, Longview, Palestine, Nacogdoches, Lufkin, down toward Houston, you are in the 10% hatched area. Uh, northeast side of the San Antonio metro area up to Austin, Waco, um, you are also in the 10% hatched area. Large hail threat does extend back up into northwest Texas, places like Vernon, Childress, Wichita Falls, um, and then down through parts of the enhanced risk area there. Again, Dallas, Fort Worth, you're in the large hail threat, down toward Waco, Austin, San Antonio, um, into Houston, uh, Palestine, places like that. And then our damaging wind threat is there as well for parts of east Texas, including the Dallas, Fort Worth metro area, Tyler, Longview, Palestine. Uh, same areas under the gun for the wind threat as well. So let's go ahead and take a look now that you know who is in and who is out for the at least the current threat right now. And we've got kind of three different regimes that I'm watching today, at least for a tornado threat. So we're going to have our first regime here, which is going to be kind of up on the surface low, stretching up here into northwest Texas. Our surface low is going to be somewhere in here. So Wichita Falls, Vernon, Childress, up toward uh, Bowie, Decatur, Henrietta. Our second sort of uh, regime is going to be the dry line out here. Pl places like s in central Texas, down toward San Antonio, up the I-35 corridor, toward Waco and Austin. Then there's going to be a third sort of regime out here in east Texas, places like Palestine, Lufkin, Nacogdoches, that is going to have the potential for discrete warm sector supercell development. And we're going to talk about all three of these regimes here today. So let's go ahead and take a look at our satellite imagery. This is a pretty clear view at where our trough is. We've got a very well-defined um, trough here that is pretty much centered right over the Arizona-New Mexico border with um, some, you can see, the fetch of southwesterly flow in the exit region of that trough. Uh, that's going to provide quite a bit of lift here across central and eastern Texas for today. Not going to move a whole lot throughout the day today, but it is going to move somewhat to the east, and that exit region will be, will be placed right over central and east Texas. That best combination of lift and sort of spin in the atmosphere going to be centered over east and central Texas today. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our um, 500 millibar map. So this is our current... Um, current 500 millibar map here, according to SBC Mesoanalysis, you can see where that trough is centered. A little bit of a closed contour there, uh, the uh, Arizona-New Mexico border, but this is a very high amplitude feature, very high amplitude. This trough has dug pretty deeply down into 
northwest Mexico there. Very strong defluence aloft in the exit region of this trough. Defluence, again, is that spreading out of the wind vectors here. You can see that they kind of spread out like that. So we have kind of um, this sort of area of large-scale lift that is going to be favorable for um, synoptic scale lift storm development later on this afternoon. Again, defluence aloft, you get air that spreads apart aloft, creates that void, you get rising motion as a result to replace that air that's, you know, so to speak, gone missing as it kind of spreads apart there aloft. So when you have nice defluence like this in the exit region of the trough, we have very strong lifting mechanism on a broad scale. Let's go down to 850 millibars here, take a look at our low level jet. It's going to help us continue to pump the moisture to the north today from the Gulf. Very broad swath of 30, 40, 50 plus knot uh, low level jet here out of the south. So it's going to pump that moisture northward and continue to moisten the low level environment throughout the day. And this low level jet's going to stick around and remain fairly strong. And the reason that it's going to remain fairly strong throughout the day is we've got a very potent surface low that's going to develop here. We've already seen it start to develop here across eastern New Mexico. Right in here where you can kind of see that cyclonic flow here at the surface. And once again we've talked about this before. The reason we get surface cyclogenesis in this spot is because we have our broad um, deep highly ampl high amplitude trough here. We get southwesterly flow traversing the Rockies. And as that happens we get um, a surface low to develop on the east side of the Rockies. It's called Lee cyclogenesis. So that's going to continue today as that trough moves off to the east and we'll get consolidation and strengthening of this surface low. It's going to move off to the east or east-northeast throughout the day today. By afternoon should be somewhere in the northwest Texas vicinity. Somewhere I would say in the Wichita Falls vicinity by mid-afternoon or so today. What that's going to do, that's going to that's going to strengthen the flow in the low level, so we're going to pump that moisture northward. We'll take a look at the surface map in a second uh, as far as the station plots go. It's going to back that flow as well, so we're going to get flow that's going to be out of the south or southeast and really provide us with, with large looping hodographs as we have surface flow out of the southeast, 850 millibar flow that strengthens and is going to be out of the south, and our 500 millibar flow is out of the southwest. So deep layer shear and low level shear going to be in place today for a severe storm and supercell threat, perhaps with some large hail and tornadoes, some of which could be strong. Let's look at our surface map here. So this is the most recent surface data. So yesterday we were talking about the fact that the moisture was kind of centered over the central gulf, ready to be pulled northward once that surface low develops. And we've seen a real moistening trend overnight uh, so far. We can see the 70s dew points out here in the west gulf right now at these buoys right here. They were in the mid 50s yesterday so that moisture has really been pulled to the north. You can already see upper 60s dew points have come onshore, 67 there, kind of in the Corpus Christi area and that will just continue to be pumped northward continuously throughout the day today as that surface low continues to develop and strengthen throughout the day, move off to the east. That surface flow will strengthen as well. Continue to pump this moisture northward. 60s dew points, upper 60s dew points should easily make their way into far, into at least central Texas, perhaps north, north central Texas with probably uh, upper 50s to low 60s dew points in a tongue up here into northwest Texas. So Shouldn't have a problem with low-level moisture today Today for any of these regimes. Let's take a look at some soundings. We're lucky enough, we usually do this in the in kind of the late morning hours so that we have the 12Z soundings in. But lucky enough, they have a research project ongoing called Perils. They're looking at um, the um, kind of structure, maintenance, etc. of linear convection. And so um, this research project as a result has allowed these offices to, these weather service offices to launch balloons every six hours. So we have a, a 6Z set of soundings. So these were released at going to be 1 a.m. Central Daylight Time. So these are just a couple hours old. So this is going to give us a pretty good picture of the atmosphere right now. So this is going to be Corpus Christi here. So this is our sounding. You can see we've got a very deep moist layer. Did not really have that at all yesterday, but very deep moist layer. The 
temperature profile and the dew point profile very close together here up to about 750 millibars. So a very deep fetch of moisture here in the low levels. We've got a some semblance of an elevated mixed layer aloft here, that layer of capping aloft, steep lapse rates, warm air aloft, that will subserve to suppress convection for much of the morning, I do think. Although this is not that stout of an, of an elevated mixed layer. Again, the elevated mixed layer is that layer of steep lapse rates that emanated from the desert southwest, got pushed off to the east with the, um, the low to mid-level winds, and sets up above the surface, above this moist layer here, it helps cap the atmosphere. And we've got a little bit, not a whole lot, I do think, given the strength of the trough, given our, the ample large-scale synoptic scale lift, this cap should be broken fairly early on, uh, pr perhaps by late morning into early afternoon. Um, so we should perhaps get storm initiation probably sometime in the early afternoon, early to mid-afternoon hours once that cap breaks. If we go up to Dallas here, we're, we're still quite dry. We've still got a our 33 dew point here at the surface, very dry air in the low levels. But that should change quickly by late morning to mid-afternoon. We're going to have, again, just that fire hose of moisture getting pumped in to north central Texas there. So you, you can already see a bunch of warm advection ongoing. We can tell by the how the winds veer or turn counter turn clockwise with height. You can see the hodograph is kind of clockwise turning here in nature. That means strong warm advection is ongoing. And again, that should continue throughout the day today. Let's go off to the east a little bit. We'll take we'll take a look at Shreveport, much of the same, fairly dry profile. Again, that's going to change by mid afternoon, mid to late afternoon today. And down by Lake Charles, kind of dry air in the low levels as well. But good news is that down to the south, the source region, we've got a decent elevated mixed layer there atop a very deep moist layer. So moisture should not be an issue today, I think, at all, given how deep this moist layer is and the amount of warm advection, warm moist advection that's ongoing. So let's take a look at the models here. This is going to be the six Zulu NAM runs. This came out at 1 a.m. Central Daylight Time. And so you can, we're going to look at the NAM model and the RAP model here. And so this is going to be our depiction of the 500 millibar trough. So you can see very um, high amplitude feature here. That trough is dug down into northwest Mexico. Strong belt of flow rounding the base of that trough uh, with great defluence spreading a part of those wind vectors in the exit region of that trough. So large scale lift over Texas today should not be an issue at all given the presentation of this trough. Now this trough is going to move off to the east and by um, early to mid-afternoon it's going to be centered somewhere over you know southeast east New Mexico, west Texas. Closed contour here so this is kind of a closed low and so our, our multiple regimes here kind of interesting so this first regime that we talked about kind of that area up near the surface low in northwest Texas that's gonna be closer to this cold air aloft and kind of gonna act like somewhat of a of a cold core event you're gonna have storms go right up on the surface low in kind of an arc there and thanks to that cold air aloft with the trough you can see temperatures here we've got a nice swath of cold air associated with that trough once that cold air moves in the air is gonna the atmosphere is going to rapidly destabilize even further up here. So we should have decent instability going to grow, to, going to get greater once that cold air aloft comes in and should get some storms to fire right along that surface low there in uh, northwest Texas. As far as the dry line and warm sector goes, those regimes, those are going to be more of our classic sort of severe weather regimes where we have just ample 500 millibar flow here, Great defluence aloft, um, strong large scale synoptic scale lift, um, and going to be pretty potent given that we have a pretty strong low level jet out here on the NAM. So, this is going to be our low level jet. You can see you, we saw that kind of sw large swath of, of low level jet here across the central plains down into south, the southern plains this morning. And that's going to continue. You can see evidence of that surface low, that low-level circulation here. And that's just going to continue that low-level jet throughout the day. This is a very potent low-level jet. We're, we're talking 70-plus knots at, in places here across northeast and east Texas here. That is, frankly, pretty frightening. When you have a low-level jet like that out of the south, 
You have surface winds out of the southeast. Your low-level shear is going to be extremely, extremely strong. So we'll take a look at some photographs here in a second. Let's look at our 700 millibar flow here, see if we have any short waves moving through. And we kind of have a little bit of one right there by the morning. This could help set off convection early. Uh, this is only at 15Z, so that would be 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Little kink in the height contours here. That does indicate some sort of shortwave trough there. So this may um, allow storms to fire in the open warm sector fairly early on. The atmosphere won't quite be ready by this point, I don't think so. There could be some chance that the warm sector stabilizes due to rain and kind of what we call colloquially crap vection, storms that kind of go up and ruin the environment from a chase perspective. And that would be a good thing for the warm sector. If we can get a cluttered warm sector, then the threat for stronger storms later on would, would decrease because the atmosphere would be somewhat stabilized from the morning convection. If we move on through the day, that kind of those winds kind of strengthen there over the warm sector. And we get kind of maybe a little bit, another little, another little short wave here, kind of along a dry line to force kind of that dry line convection. Um, and one thing today that's going to be critical is the amount of clearing. If we, we don't quite have our visible satellite here yet, but we can look at our infrared here. And we do see we have some uh, rain and clouds here ongoing across central Texas at the moment. So we're going to have to watch that. See if we have enough clearing throughout the morning. If we do get more clearing than expected, less convection in the open warm sector, that would increase the severe weather threat for later on, increase the strong tornado threat with any supercells that can fire in the open warm sector, as well as along the dry line. So clearing is going to be a major um, talking point today. If we get more clearing, more instability, more, greater threat for severe storms. More clouds and rain less chance for robust convective development, less chance for strong storms, severe weather threat would decrease. But we're going to have to watch that. I do expect there to be some clearing here at some point, particularly up here along the surface low, as well as kind of south here along the dry line. Warm sector is a much more conditional threat. We're going to have to watch that. If we do get, again, more sun in the warm sector, less crap vection, so to speak, that would increase the severe th threat for later on this afternoon. So let's go down to our surface map here, and let me zoom into the Southern Plains sector right now. So you can see that flow has already started to strengthen here in the low levels, broad swath of southeasterly flow here, feeding up into that broad surface low. That surface low again going to consolidate throughout the day today and move off to the east. So by 21Z, you can see we've got our surface low centered right here over the Southern Texas Panhandle. That kind of warm air feeding up into that surface low. We've got southerly to southeasterly surface winds here, especially up here on the low. So we should have very good backing of the low-level winds here ahead of that surface low. And this will be this this uh, regime here, the surface low regime, going to be removed from the strongest low-level jet. However, so it's going to be more of your cold core type wind profile. There's going to be a little bit of low-level shear, but there should be quite a bit of low-level instability to help stretch that shear into the vertical pretty efficiently. Um, so the degree of low-level shear, if we can get enough for an adequate amount for tornadoes, then we could have a few tornadoes up here as well, given the what should be strong low-level instability. Steep lapse rates aloft should have a large hail threat up here as well. Along the dry line, we do have southerly flow here feeding up. That should, again, pump that moisture northward along the dry line and to the east in the warm sector, you can see. Uh, so we've got our 60s, high, high 60s dew points confined to South Texas, but again, going to rapidly get transported to the north up here into Northwest Texas. A little bit more meager dew points up here along the immediate surface low here. So there may, storms may be a little bit more high based up here, but we do have a, a large swath of mid to upper 60s dew points here along our dry line right in here and in our open warm sector here. So it should be a broad swath of a highly unstable atmosphere here uh, this afternoon and evening. So let's take let's take some soundings here. We'll take one here. This is going to be at 21Z. So this would be 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So we'll take one along the surface low there. We'll take one just ahead of the dry line, kind of where that highest moisture is. 
we'll take one out over the open warm sector here. So this is going to be our surface low play. And you can see the low level shear is quite weak. So that was the concern here. This is well removed from the strongest low level jet. So our flow at about a kilometer above the surface is quite weak. Not really enough low level shear here for a tornado threat. But given the steep lapse rates aloft, strong instability, very, very cold air aloft here, steep lapse rates should be a large hail threat with those as well. You can see the, the low level lapse rates, 8.6 degrees Celsius per kilometer, low level K215. So very steep lapse rates in the low levels. If we do get a little bit more shear than expected here in the low levels, there would be a greater tornado threat. But I think the threat up here is mostly going to be a large hail threat given these soundings here. Now along a dry line, and you can see we've, we've got a completely uncapped atmosphere by, by 4 p.m. This is a pretty classic severe weather sounding. We've got a little bit of dry air aloft, steep lapse rates aloft, should be a large hail threat, at least in the initial stages of storm development here, the first couple hours of storm development here. Very large instability, almost 2,000 joules per kilogram of CAPE, with strong low-level instability, 160 joules per kilogram of 0 to 3 kilometer CAPE. Very deep moist layer here as we saw on our, our observed sounding. So this is a pretty classic severe weather sounding here. You can see our hodographs are very favorable for tornadic supercells here. Large looping hodographs. There is a little bit of backing in the mid-levels. A little bit of a kink there in the hodographs. And we've talked about this in the past that when you have this kink, sometimes it can be good, sometimes it can be bad. If you can um, determine that there's going to be a discrete storm mode, this doesn't matter a whole lot. But if you have a, an already messy storm mode, this is only going to further the messy nature of the storms. But what it also might do, if we can get discrete supercells, is you can get a little bit of backing. So you're here, you can kind of imagine our radar depiction of a supercell in this environment here to follow the hotograph roughly. So you're going to have your, your mesocyclone, your tornado cyclone there. Precipitation going to wrap kind of in front of that, but then it's going to get vented off back to the north thanks to some mid-level backing. And so in this case, the tornado, given the storm motions here, kind of moving right into that kink, we may see a little bit more of... Tornadoes may be a little bit tougher to spot today. They might be going into their forward flank a little bit, and so they might be surrounded by rain a lot. Uh, at times. So something to note there, but nonetheless, supercells would be favored with this kind of mode, with this kind of sounding, with a tornado threat as well. This is in the open warm sector, and this is what's scary. This is These hodographs are extremely scary here. Now instability in the open warm sector is kind of not that great. You can see we do have a deep moist layer here up to almost 700 millibars, but our instability is a lot skinnier than it was along the dry line and back up to the northwest along the surface low. That's perhaps because the NAM is, is catching on that there's going to be a lot of rain and clouds in the open warm sector. Again, if we get more clearing in the open warm sector, given these profiles, almost over well over 500 meters square per second squared of effective storm relative helicity, that would be quite scary. If we can get discrete tornadic supercells in this environment, they would have the chance to produce strong long track tornadoes given this degree of uh, low level shear. So that'll be something to watch. Again, clearing is going to be absolutely critical today. If there's more sunshine, there's gonna be more instability, and there's going to be more of a threat for strong tornadoes and strong supercells. So we move on towards zero Z. We continue to get that moist advection to the north, that tongue of moisture up here on the surface low. Let's take another set of soundings here along the dry line on the surface low and out in the open warm sector. So this is going to be on the dry line. We do have a little bit of an increase in low level shear here given strong instability in the low levels. This would have I think a marginal tornado threat but again mostly a hail threat up on that surface low up in northwest Texas. So places like Wichita Falls, Nocona, uh, Bowie, Decatur, Henrietta. More of, a tor more of a large hail threat up here with an outside chance of a tornado or two. Dry line here, um, large looping hodographs remain, strong instability, great low level instability as well. We do have that quite a bit of a kink here in this mid-level flow. Now it is above the effective inflow layer, so it's not going to have perhaps as much of a threat. 
perhaps it's only going to allow storms to be a little bit more messy given that storm motions will go right kind of into this kink we may see a little bit more rain wrapped tornadoes a little bit messier um, as far from a storm spotting perspective but nonetheless this would be favorable for tornadic supercells and then again out here in the out here in the open warm sector this this is downright frightening here um, this would be a strong tornado threat if we can get uh, discrete supercells in the open warm sector. Steep lapse rates a lot, so there would be a large hail threat with those as well. But now we start to see a little bit more instability. There is a little bit of a weakness in the low level lapse rates here, which may temper the threat slightly. Again, if more clearing, more instability, more of a tornado threat. But this would be a uh, very unstable environment coupled with very strong low level shear. Um, this would have any storms in this environment would have the threat for strong tornadoes. Now let's talk about storm mode here real quick. Let's go to our, this is going to be our, our most unstable cape plot. And we don't use most unstable cape to determine the um, instability here, but I like this map because it does have the wind shear vectors on it um, to kind of help us out. So this is a 21Z, this is going to be our, our initiating boundary here, our dry line. If we look at the orientation of our shear vectors with the um, initiating boundary here, we'll notice here that up here in this kind of northwest regime, um, up on the surface low, the shear vectors are a little bit more perpendicular to the boundary. So we have a better chance for discrete storms up here. In the middle here along the dry line, we do kind of have more of a parallel nature between the shear vectors and the initiating boundary. So the window may be a little bit uh, short for discrete storms, at least in the middle here, but down south with southern extent, this is trended a little bit more perpendicular. We do have kind of this 45 degree angle or so between the shear vectors and the dry line here. That would uh, That's kind of right on the verge for discrete storms and a more linear storm mode. Again, we do this because the initiating boundary, if your shear vectors are parallel to the initiating boundary, you get storms to go up and the precipitation will flow into the mesocyclone of the of nearby storms and you get kind of just this line that fills in along the initiating boundary, more of a linear storm mode. When you have more perpendicular uh, shear vectors, you get um, precipitation vented off to the east and you get more isolated storms that don't quite congeal quickly into a line. So we'll have to watch this. It does look like the window is going to be a little bit broader for discrete storms here, particularly with southern extent along the dry line here. Again, up on the up on the surface low, there should be a little bit more discrete in nature given the orientation of the shear vectors with the dry line. Down south along the dry line here, the pure dry line away from the surface low, this is this is kind of right on the verge. So there there should be some window, a few hour window for discrete storm development here along the dry line. And this has trended a little bit more toward a discrete storm mode, which would increase the tornado threat with these. If we go to our previous runs here, so we'll go to yesterday's runs. You can see this was the morning run yesterday. You'll notice how much the, the shear vectors were parallel to the dry line here, much more so than they are today. So this is a little bit concerning that the dry line storms will have um, great, very high instability, strong low level shear to work with. And now that we have a little bit more of a um, signal for discrete storms here, that could enhance the tornado threat along the dry line. Warm sector storms should be a little bit more isolated in nature just because they're they're forming kind of on these these weak sort of prefrontal surf pre-dry line surface sort of troughs, these little subtle forcing mechanisms. So they're but they're gonna be more isolated by nature. So again if we can get more clearing here, the more clearing we have, the higher the instability, the more of a tornado threat we will have. So um, this video has gone on a little bit long, not going to look so much at the wrap here, but let's take a look at the HER and kind of wrap this up here. So this is the latest HRRR run. We're going to, let's kind of move up here. This is going to be the 9Z run. So you can see convection, the HER does have convection blossom across much of the warm sector throughout the morning. This is by 18Z, so 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time. We have storms all the way up into central Oklahoma out here pretty much cluttering the warm sector. So this is going to be something to watch. If we do get this much convection in the warm sector, this, number one, these storms do look somewhat isolated in nature. So these could have a, an early tornado threat with them as well. The shear profile should be there pretty early on 
but whether or not the instability is there is the question. So if, there is, if there's been enough instability for these storms to work with, we could have a tornado threat pretty early on with these. But we'll have to watch this. This could end up cluttering the warm sector. They do kind of move out. We do get some clearing here along the dry line. Storms do kind of explode here. First near the surface low by about 20Z, so about 3 p.m. Central Daylight Time up here in far northwest Texas, the far southeast Texas panhandle. So that will be, would be about 3 p.m. And we kind of watch 3 to 4 p.m. here along the dry line for storm development. Whoops, sorry about that. So 3 p.m. up in northwest Texas, then we get storm initiation about 4 to 5 p.m. here along the dry line, pretty much in south central Texas. So San Antonio to Austin to Waco, we get storms to fire. Again, these storms could be tornadic out here in the open warm sector if they have enough instability to work with, but that is again in question. We go on a couple hours, we get a increase in storm intensity and coverage here along the dry line. But again, we, we are seeing some semblance here on this particular model that we are going to see a more semi-discrete storm mode. And that would have, that does have major implications for um, the tornado threat. If we do get this more discrete storm mode, like the NAM was showing, like the HER is showing, then we would have a higher tornado threat and strong tornado threat, as well as a large hail threat. If we get more of a linear storm mode right off the bat, that would favor more of a damaging wind and embedded tornado threat and lessen the overall threat for tornadoes and large hail. These open warm sector storms would need to be watched as well. You can see how they kind of have this, this kidney bean shape. means that they would be supercells. With that low-level jet so strong, would not be surprised to see a few of these become tornadic. And if they do remain discrete and have enough instability to work with, they would have a strong tornado threat as well as a large hail threat. You can see they continue off into the early evening hours. This would be um, 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time, so right about sunset here. We do have strong supercells ongoing as far south as even the San Antonio area, but mainly here to the south and southeast of the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area, places like Waco, off toward Tyler and Longview. Then we kind of get this these storms to congeal by about 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time here. We get kind of a messier storm mode as all these storms kind of congeal and start training. Let's go back to the 6Z HER. This, would get, this is going to give us a picture that's going to go a little bit farther into, into the future. Again, this is, just, this is just a guess at what the radar is going to look like. So don't take this as set in stone. This is just one solution that might happen here. But you can see the multiple regimes. Storms here along the surface low, mainly a large hail threat, at least early on. By about 5 to 6 p.m., they could acquire enough low-level shear to produce a tornado or two. But again, mostly a large hail threat up here. Semi-discrete storms here with a strong tornado threat, large hail threat along the dry line. These warm sector storms, again, going to have to be watched for the amount of instability they have to work with. But again, they kind of congeal. We kind of get this line that's going to affect East Texas through much of the morning hours on Tuesday. Then finally, the line should move out by mid-morning to early afternoon, uh, move out of Texas by early morning or late morning to mid-afternoon. Mid and then tomorrow looks like a pretty potent day in the southeast, but we'll do another video on that at a later time. So all in all, again, we've kind of got three different regimes today up here, places like Wichita Falls, Nocona, Henrietta, Bowie, Decatur up here along the surface low. Mostly a large hail threat up here, but uh, later on toward the evening hours, 5, 6, 7, 8 p.m., they will have the threat for maybe an outside chance at a tornado or two. The greater threat for strong tornadoes is going to be, number one, along the dry line here from the I-35 corridor eastward. Here are places like Waco, Austin, down toward the San Antonio metro area. And then we're going to have to watch this third regime here out in the open warm sector where the low-level jet is strongest, low-level shear is strongest, for discrete supercell development out here in the open warm sector. Places like Tyler, Longview, Lufkin, Nacogdoches, Palestine, even as far south as Houston, uh, the Woodlands, Bryan, places like that. So three different regimes today. I think by about 3 p.m. we should see storms start to fire. 2 to 3 p.m. we should see storms start to fire here up in far northwest Texas, maybe even the far so southeast Texas panhandle. Then we'll get storm development down along the dry line probably as probably around 4 p.m. or so. And the threat for open warm sector convection is going to kind of exist from late morning onward uh, and will maximize here through late afternoon and early evening. 
out here in the open warm sector. So again, the threat for large hail, strong tornadoes, and damaging winds will be all there today. Damaging wind threat will increase as the evening progresses, as those storms kind of congeal into a line across East Texas, the damaging wind threat and embedded tornado threat will be higher. But that sweet spot, kind of 4 to 7 or 8 p.m., I think here, maybe even toward 9 or 10 p.m., we sh if we have semi-discrete storms here along the dry line in the open warm sector, they will have a tornado, large hail, and a tornado threat, perhaps some strong tornadoes as well. So that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.